It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Indiana State Heads Volleyball Coach, Coach Lindsay Allman. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college volleyball? Yeah, um, it's kind of, there's a little bit of a natural progression that happens with it um, when you're done playing. Um, I've been playing the sport since I was 11, loved it. Uh, basically, I, I was either going to try to go play professionally or get into coaching. Uh, my dad's a coach. I'm a coach's kid. So it was just always a piece of me. I always had great relationships with the um, coaches I played for to where we were able to have that rapport. And um, it felt very natural and authentic to take that next step. And um, yeah, I, it's, I haven't looked back. I love it. I absolutely love what I do. Of course, being a coach's kid, how did that impact you into where you are now as a college coach? Yeah, it just, um, you ha- it's an example, right? It's another mentor. It's another like mindset that I can bounce ideas off of. I can talk to, you know, I can come back down to reality, um, you know, get grounded again. And so uh, it's, it's been great, but it's, you know, it, from my, when I was very little, those were the conversations that were happening at the dinner table, right? And so that experience makes a difference. What was it like going to Maine University and putting on that jersey? Oh, it was awesome. I, um, I tell my assistants, I'm like, it is so sad to think about how far removed I am from like putting on a jersey. There's nothing better than putting on a jersey and being in the locker room. But loved Maine, loved my experience there, followed my coach out there, um, loved playing for her. I wanted to go far. Um, I wanted to have an experience, and I did. I wanted to go somewhere where I knew I could play from the start, you know, um, and compete, and I did. And um, yeah, I, I I loved it out there. What was that feeling like of getting to put on that main blue jersey? But also, what were some of your accomplishments? Yeah. Um, so I came in with a large recruiting class. There was seven of us, and then a transfer came in, making it eight. Um, I was one of the few that got to play as a freshman, which was awesome. So to me, that was a big deal of playing six rotations my freshman year. Uh, I was an all rookie team in the league, um, you know, and then throughout my career, you know, consistently all conference, we, you know, were making it to our conference tournament, competing for a championship by my senior year. And so, um, you know, had a, I think a pretty decent playing career, you know, a thousand kills, a thousand digs, all of that stuff. Um, my coach wasn't really big on stats, so which I, was something I really appreciated. We didn't spend a lot of time talking about that um, individual stats, you know, and so that um, she really it was always about the betterment for the team and what's best for the program. And it's a team sport. And I think that's a mindset we're losing a little bit. What was that like competing against and going to the national championship in your senior year? We didn't play in a national championship. It was just a conference championship. I wish it was a national championship. Um, It was great. Uh, You know, it's, it's what you want to do. It's what you work for every year. It's what you're doing in the off season, Um, you know, in the weight room, it's those sprints, it's those 6 a.m. workouts, it's the why, right? And so um, any, any game that you can compete, you know, is good. So it was, yeah, it was great. Of course, how does it feel to know that you had the thousand career kills and obviously touches at me. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't track that to be honest, when I was there, it wasn't something I was chasing when I was there. I really just was putting in the work. Um, you put in the work and those things kind of come to you. Right. And so now that I'm in the coach's chair, I understand how uh, important that was and how impactful in reality that was. Um, and, um, 
but you know, I wouldn't want to change my mindset. You know, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be in college chasing those things. Right. Cause that's, you just put in the work and it happens. So, um, but now it's, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that I was able to have some achievements for my career. How was it like, obviously leaving Maine to go into obviously pursuing your dream of getting into college coaching and coaching as a grad assistant? Yeah, it was great. You don't know what you're getting into, right? I had a great leader with Ricky Ludes and Abby Sutherland as my bosses there. Um, We won the conference my first year there, uh, which was obviously really exciting to be a part of. Um, Yeah, I just, you know, you don't know. You don't know what it's like to get into coaching until you do it. And so I put my faith into it and moved to Mississippi and I loved it. I, but I knew I had to give it a chance. What are some of the things that you learned during your time at Southern Mississippi as a grad assistant to help you now where you are? Yeah, I mean, I learned what it took to be an assistant, right? Like I learned back then GAs weren't allowed to recruit. So it it was, um, you know, I was learning what it was like to uh, work as a staff, to coach, to have rapport with the players, to the time commitments, um, the emotional commitments, um, you know, really shadowing Abby, who was the assistant at the time and learning from her. And, you know, it's that stepping stone. You got to learn to be an assistant before you can learn to be a head coach. Right. And that was, that was what I did. And, um, that was just the start of, you know, my career. What was it like getting obviously your first assistant coaching job at Bradley? Uh, it was great, right? Um, close to home for me. I'm originally from St. Louis. So being in my network for recruiting was really important for me. Um, you know, and again, you got to start somewhere. You got to get in there. You got to get your toes wet. You got you to handle some things. You got to take on more responsibility. And that was what Bradley was for me. Of course, with being close to Bradley and living there, what was it like, obviously, being the recruitment coordinator? Did you find it more easier to recruit for Bradley? Um, it just, I had to be really organized. I had to create systems. I had to um, have an understanding of what the coach really wanted, right, within the recruits and how they fit into um, the roster, the roster management, all of that stuff. And so, also great experience because obviously we live and die on recruiting and we got to have a good foundation and a good system to have you know be successful of course for you what was that like getting in your first opportunity at the power five level of coaching at the ACC um so I don't know how much you know about that it was a whirlwind right um it was a very unique experience that I honestly kind of hope no one else has to go through So when I got there, I was hired on by a coach. And when I got there, he resigned a month later. So just getting settled, we were hardly in the gym together, kind of came out of nowhere. He resigned a month later. Then I stepped into an interim head role, right? Um, And then they brought in uh, Bill Ferguson, who took over, you know, and then obviously we all saw kind of what happened there with the academic scandal. And so I, and I was not a part of any of that, but it, so it was like, I was, you know, thrown to the wolves a little bit, um, which is fine. I, I like those environments. I thrive in those. Um, I was, my parents kind of embraced that mentality growing up, you know, figure it out. And um, it, I kind of just figured it out. I did pieces and I kept, I kept trying to get the program moving forward. I, you know, I kept putting as long, I kept putting the program first, right? Like big picture, um, what's best for the program? What do I feel is best for the program right now? What can I do? What are my limitations? You know, how, and how can I get that experience? And, you know, because of that, it obviously launched me into my first head coaching job, um, which I don't know, I would have really been pervy to some of the conversations that were happen if that didn't happen to me at Wake Forest. But um, so my experience in the Power Five was very different um, and unique, I guess. But uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say I can really talk about like, oh, this is what it's like at the Power Five because um, I got a very, I got to look behind the curtain, but I had a very big mix of roles and responsibilities just due to the circumstances. Of course, what was that like? Obviously, coaching in the ACC and coaching against UNC, NC State, and Duke. Yeah, I mean, obviously, look at the ACC now, right? They're doing a great job. But um, the I think what was the most exciting piece of being in the ACC was just 
the caliber of talent that you get to recruit. Like there's just a different level of kids that you get access to because of your, because of being a power five program. Right. And that's all power five schools. And so that to me was really fun. Um, obviously it's really good volleyball. It's super competitive. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's great. Like it, it was awesome, even though it was one season. So of course, coming to Indiana State, what was that like, obviously, taking over a program and building it f- as scratch from your own? Yeah, um, I mean, I, yeah, it was, again, it was awesome. Um, first, you know, I owe so much to Indiana State, first in the administration here, like, first school to really, you know, take a risk and, you know, someone who doesn't have had coaching experience to bring her in. Um, you know, the nice thing is I had familiarity with the conference by being at Bradley I'm from this region, so it helped with recruiting, you know, and then um, I have a tie to Terre Haute. My, you know, my, both my parents are alums of Indiana State, and so my grandparents lived right down the road, so I, you know, they're, like, I had an affinity for this place, and so, you know, that, that's important, and that, that breeds passion, so that's, you know, that's going to help me get kids here, so um, it was awesome. It was super exciting, right? This is what everyone's chasing is trying to be a head coach. And I, you know, got that first shot here. Of course, how has that passion of, and obviously the tides of having your family that went to Indiana state and now you're the head coach, how does that obviously feel? It's awesome. I mean, I think you, you got to look at a job when you take a job, you got to be able to look at it big picture, you know, and when I stepped into a head coaching role, I wanted to be somewhere where I knew I could be successful, right? And Indiana State, even though the program hadn't seen success prior, I knew it was somewhere that I could be successful because I was from this region, because I was familiar with the conference, because I knew I had a support system within um, the alums here, right? Like I immediately, you know, so many people remember my dad playing here or played with my dad or, you know, so there just was like this instant support for our program. And, um, that that's huge. Like you want to walk into somewhere where, you know, you can be successful, where, you know, you can see some support from the get go. Right. And that's what I got here. Of course, how is that like, obviously having the alums back you and have that support and obviously follow you along your career? Yeah. I mean, it's you, if you're trying to elevate or upgrade things in your program, you're going to need people that you can lean on. Um, whether that's financial, whether that's resources, like connections, whatever that might be, whether that's having them being able to come into the gym and talk about, hey, this is what it was like playing here. And, you know, don't, don't overlook this and how important, like that, those things matter. Hearing those messages, um, you know, relating to them, understand, like the players, you know, understanding what's going on is important. Like, hey, I've walked in your shoes. It was 20 years ago, but I walked in your shoes. And so, um, again, that it's, it's, it's important. It's really important. Of course, with your players, how has that been where obviously you have family ties to Indiana state, even though you didn't play, but you still have family ties where it helps you obviously grow that bond. Yeah. I think my players are a part of it too. My players have got to meet more people. Um, they understand the importance of having that support and having the alum. I mean, even my alums, right? Like you got to come back, right? We want you back here. And so seeing it and, you know, having it be truly a mindset is, you know, once you're here, you're always a part of this. This is important. How have you built the culture for Indiana State? A lot of hard work, a lot of long nights, a lot of um, consulting and support from other colleagues, a lot of um, you know, my players do it too, you know, finding those good leaders within the recruits, getting them into our gym and that can teach the hard lessons when they need to be taught, who can set the standards regardless of the result. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, all of that, all of that matters and just staying authentic and staying consistent, you know, across the board. What are some of the traditions that you've implemented for Indiana State's volleyball program? Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about honesty. We talk a lot about, you know, conversations and buy-in and like having feedback. Like, I want to know, you know, like ask the questions, um, you know, here within my staff, like my players always take priority. So when they come into the office, we stop everything we were doing, you know, it's just, we're here for them. We're here for them. We're humans. You know, it's okay to make mistakes. Um, you know, that was a big thing when I first got here that, you know, it was a lot about fear. It was a lot of things were fear-based. And so, 
it took a while for them to understand like, Hey, I'm not going to be mad if you make a mistake. I'm not going to be mad if you're injured, you know, like it's okay. And, um, you know, once they learned all of that, it's, you know, it's been smooth sailing, but it, it takes time and work and conversations and more work and more conversations. <laughs> of course, who are some of the teams that you face in your conference? Um, so we play obviously Northern Iowa, um, Missouri State, Illinois State. Our conference is changing. Uh, Loyola just stepped out. Um, they're going to the A-10. And so now we have Murray State, Belmont, and UIC coming in for the first time. So haven't played those teams. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to, the conference is going to change a little bit. Looking forward to playing them. Of course, what is that like, obviously, getting to play some of your teams that obviously you've played for a while, but also some of your new teams, but also more important, what is that like getting to play Bradley? Uh, I mean, Bradley to me is just another school. I, I, I really do feel so far removed from my experience there. Um, you know, I had a great relationship with Carol. She just left and took the San Antonio job, um, you know, but besides that is that we prep for them. They're not any different than playing the Illinois States and the Northern Iowa's and the Drakes and all of that. And so um, looking forward to these new schools coming in. It's going to change our, our schedule. Um, it's it's a shakeup in the league. And right now, I think it kind of opens the doors for everybody. And I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like with the three in, but we're looking forward to playing them for sure. What's that going to be like, obviously, to travel to those new schools like Drake? Yeah, um, we'll see. I mean, it, We'll see, you know, it should, it should be fine. Just another match, right? We do, we show up where we need to show up. So it should be good. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to play college volleyball? Yeah, um, it depends on their age, right? Um, but in reality, it's a lot of emails and film, right? Or sending those over and then we get out and try to see you live um, and then, you know, get you on campus for a visit. But Based on their age, you know, we can't talk to them. So we just, you know, you, we got to kind of understand those pieces. But in general, you know, June 15th is when we start reaching out phone calls and then they can come on campus in August and then they sign their senior year. What are some of the things that you look at in these prospective student athletes when you're going out on the road, such as obviously going to tournaments? Yeah, um, it's definitely specific to position, um, but universally, you know, we're going to watch, we're going to watch your eye contact. We're going to watch your demeanor. We're going to watch how you, you know, communicate verbally and non-verbally to your teammates, to your coaches, right? That's kind of that umbrella piece, um, how you communicate non-verbally or verbally to your parents, right? It's pretty obvious who they are, you know, on the court. And so we pay attention to those things, but then it's otherwise it's specific to what we have in the gym and what we need within each position and what we need to upgrade. What does the official visit look like for those prospective student athletes looking to go to Indiana State? Yeah, depends on where they're coming from. They can't last longer than 48 hours, um, but typically they come on campus. They'll get to spend some time with the girls. Uh, we'll do, you know, they'll spend some time with me individually, coffee, lunch, dinner, some sort of meal. We like to feed them. Um, they'll meet with an academic advisor. They'll watch a practice. They'll meet with our strength coach, maybe go through a physical um, yeah. And then, you know, we kind of, we kind of wrap it up, but usually, you know, usually it's about a 24 hour visit. Of course, as head coach, what is that like, obviously seeing them come on the official visit and obviously falling in love with the program, but more than most, obviously seeing if they fit good in the Jersey. Yeah. I mean, obviously we want, we want kids who want to be here. Right. So seeing that passion, um, getting to know them is what's really important. Are they going to fit? And that's why we use everyone. We use my staff. We use other people in the department. We use the players because we got to vet them as well. We got, you know, and that's the more people you use, the more that we're going to catch any red flags where, hey, this may not work out or, oh my goodness, she's a perfect fit. Like we need to get her in here immediately. So um, yeah, yeah. What advice would you give high school athletes looking to play college volleyball? Yeah. Um, don't chase the money. First of all, I think we're getting lost a little bit in trying to chase a scholarship. Um, I think, you know, find the mindset of being excited about an opportunity, about being a part of something that's bigger than you. Um, you know, the money will come if, you know, if that's where you're at from a skill standpoint, but I think just find a good fit where you truly are going to be happy where you're going to find joy because it's hard, right? Like, so you need, 
don't pick a school just because they're giving you money, right? Pick a school because you get along with the culture, you get along with the girls, you get along with the coaching staff. Um, it's a place that you can truly compete and enjoy and have fun at versus just, is it a place I can play and am I getting money? Of course, what advice would you give those college athletes looking to go into professional volleyball, whether it's Athletes Unlimited or even international or with the U.S. team? Yeah, I mean, it, it all starts with what you do here, right? And so um, understand you got to keep your nose down and just keep working, right? Put in the work. It's going to take those extra hours, um, you know, and I see, for example, like I see so many kids that come in and light it up their freshman year, right? And make, get all these accolades, but then they kind of fizzle out, right? And so what's that next thing? What's that next layer we can add? And, um, you know, that next getting to play in college is that next layer, but what do you do with it? Um, how can you build on that? Um, you know, and take care of what you need to hear first before you go there, right? Because that's not going to happen if you're not doing your job at this level. What advice would you give future college volleyball coaches looking to get started? Advice for college coaches. Um, oh, that's, that's a tough one. You know, I think... Again, don't just take don't just take a job. I know you you just want to get your feet in the door. Find somewhere where you can create where you can be there for a little bit. Like loyalty matters and longevity matters. Like don't don't look to bounce, right? Take a job and like make something of it. Spend some time there. Truly create something there versus like, hey, I'm going to take this job and after this season, I'm going to move to the next job, right? Because that's just then there's no, you got to have something, some weight, right? Um, and be able to do any, like nothing is above what, you know, like I still do things that I should, you know, I'll shag balls. I've, I've painted my office, you know? And so it's like, just do whatever needs to be done. Like don't be above any responsibility that the program needs, right? Whether that's grocery shopping or, you know, those things that like, you know, you wish someone else would do, but they have to be done. And so, um, lean into those and just be all hands on deck. What advice would you give future head coaches looking to get started? Future head coaches really vet the program in regards to, is this a place I can be successful? Don't just take a job. Don't again, don't just step into a head coaching role, right? Understand like eyes wide open. Do I have the support from administration? What type of culture are these girls coming from? Can I be successful? Where am I recruiting from? Like, look at all of those pieces. Um, yeah. And then I'd also say, don't rush the money, you know, like, cause you're, you know, if you could put an offer on somebody, like you have them for four years, ideally. Right. And so make sure don't just throw out offers to start, like still start the vetting process from year one. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media, along with the Indiana state volleyball program at? Yeah, so um, Twitter is probably the best thing. Um, I believe we do have an Instagram. It's at, at IND State VB, but otherwise, same thing for Twitter. I'm on Twitter, uh, Coach Lindsay A, and then Indiana State is IND State VB on Twitter as well. So that, that's where you're going to get the most real time, real action. Thank you again, Coach Lindsay Allman, for your interview and best of luck in your future with the Indiana State volleyball program. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. I really appreciate it. You can find Brandon Sportsock on Facebook at Brandon Sportsock, Instagram at Brandon Sportsock, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sportsock. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Lindsay Allman, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.